Welcome to the Documentation and Coding Compliance Tip. This is part one on injections. We're going to talk about compliance to documentation of injections and vaccine administration in the medical office setting. Let's first talk about charging evaluation and management with a vaccine. This is not a new guideline, but a reminder. Only when a significantly separately identifiable evaluation and management service is performed should an appropriate ENM code be reported in addition to the vaccine and toxoid administration codes. This would be in the office, outpatient services, preventive medicine type of environment. Now, separate codes are available for combination vaccines. However, it's not appropriate to code each component of a combination vaccine separately. So you have to bundle it. Don't unbundle. Unbundling is prohibited. When a specific vaccine code is not available, the enlisted procedure code should be reported until a new code becomes available. To assist users in reporting the most recent new or revised CPT vaccine product codes, the American Medical Association uses CPT to feature updates to the CPT editorial panel actions regarding these projects. And you can go to ama-assn.org to download that information. Before administering any vaccines, give the patient copies of all pertinent vaccine information statements or VISs and make sure that the patient understands the risks and benefits of receiving that vaccine. Always provide or update the patient's medical record. To meet the reporting requirements of immunization registries, vaccine distribution programs and reporting systems such as Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, the exact vaccine product administered needs to be reported. Multiple codes for a particular vaccine are provided in the CPT codebook when the schedule or number of doses or timing differs for two or more products of the same vaccine type, such as hepatitis A and Hib, or the vaccine product is available in more than one chemical formulation, dosage, or route of administration. There are four main common types of medication orders. Standing orders, PRNs, single or one-time orders, and STAT orders. A standing order is where multiple doses of medication is administered either until it's canceled or the order is canceled by the provider or until the prescribed number of doses have been given. A PRN order is when medications are administered when the patient requires it. The provider sets a limit for intervals between doses. A one-time or single order is a medication administered once at a specified time. And a STAT order is, as it sounds, STAT, a single dose administered immediately. A complete written medication order always contains the following components. In the patient's medical record, we should see a date and time the order was written, the medication name, dosage, strength, route of administration, frequency of administration, duration of the therapy, and indications for use. All PRN meds are required to have an indication or reason, and an appropriate authentication or signature of the physician or advanced practice nurse or non-physician provider or NPP. To avoid medication errors, the spelling out of words that are often abbreviated is also recommended. For example, those listed on this slide relates to units, frequency, name of the drug. You want to write units, not you or you. Daily instead of OD, which is once daily, or QD, because can you see how just one little squiggle, especially if it's a handwritten order, could be miscommunicated and then there could be a medication administration error. We have to document the administration. Staff should demonstrate competency in their ability and training or nursing license to administer and document medication. Competency checks should be conducted on an ongoing basis and the results should be documented in each employee's personnel file. Only those demonstrating competency should be delegated to administer medication to a patient. 
it is best to develop a form or work with your EHR company to utilize available templates to prompt you to capture all the pertinent required information. We recommend utilizing forms already developed, such as what's offered by the Immunization Action Coalition, or IAC, for more than two decades. The Centers for Disease Control, or the CDC, has worked in concert with and provided financial support to IAC for the purpose of educating healthcare professionals about U.S. vaccine recommendations. Utilize a checklist or form to avoid documentation omissions or errors. Information you can use to create your own checklist is provided on the following slide. We need to make sure that there's the patient name, date of birth, or a other identifier, date and time of location, and all of these items listed on this slide. Payment can be denied upon a medical record audit when one or more of these items above are lacking or are insufficient in the patient's record when it's audited by a payer. Verify that the order is properly written. Reason for the injection or vaccine and proper administration documentation. You need to make sure it exists prior to filing the claim.